Hi, good evening, and welcome to Flower Essences Lighting the Way to Health and Happiness. We're going to talk tonight about how flower essences can help us with uh, uh, times of change and some of the, the issues that people have in contemporary society. I'm Stephen Horn, and with me is Isadora Tappens. Hi, Isadora. Yes, good evening, everyone. Yeah, so we were thinking about some of the... Um, you know, things that are going on in the world today. I mean, like if you look in the news, you'll see that there are headlines about the economy and we've got lots of unemployment, we've had lots of foreclosures and people are out of work and having difficult times finding jobs. There's problems with the environmental pollution. We just had this big thing with the, the Gulf oil spill and, and you know, uh, coastlines wrecked for decades and, uh, corruption in politics and the war in Iraq and, you know, wars elsewhere in the world, natural disasters hearing, you know, global warming. I mean, obviously, there's a lot of really, you know, difficult things going on in the world. And it's enough to just make anybody um, have some anxiety about what's happening or maybe be a little bit scared of the future or angry about what's going on. I mean, that's an emotion I've been feeling about some of the things that have happened lately. It really makes me angry. Um, or maybe, you know, be, with people who faced, you know, foreclosures and other things, you know, depression and that sort of thing. Or um, feeling sad over the losses that they've that people have had. Well, we're going to talk about how flower remedies can help with these different kinds of problems that we may be having you know, listening to the news and concerned about what's going on in the world. You know, flowers have always had the power to brighten our day, lift our mood and uh, lift our spirit and improve our mood. I mean, just their fragrance, their colors, etc. But flower essences are remedies prepared from flowers that are taken as uh, drops. They're different than aromatherapy, which is where you smell uh, an essential oil distilled from a plant. They're uh, a homeopathic-like remedy that you take in drop doses. And they help us with emotional issues. They help people heal emotional issues. And both Isadora and I have uh, used flower essences quite extensively in helping people in our healing work. And we find it a very, very important part of helping people to get well. Well, we're going to start off tonight by talking about just uh, some flower remedies to deal with stress and anxiety. And when we talk about anxiety, anxiety is really a form of chronic fear. It, fear is the natural emotion. We're going to talk about that one in, next. But fear is the emotion we uh, naturally feel when we feel like we're in danger in some way. And uh, fear induces a high output of stress hormones, which primes the body for physical activity. But a lot of times when you're dealing with some of these kinds of things that are happening in the world and you're getting that stress response because you're feeling kind of this danger of things going on, but there's nothing you can actually do about it. There's nothing you can go out and there's no bear to fight. There's no you know mountain lion to run away from. You just get this feeling of anxiousness because you just don't you know, know what to do. And the problem with that is it makes it difficult for us to relax. It makes it difficult for us to think clearly about what's going on and therefore to solve the problems. So Isadora is going to uh, primarily um, present to us some uh, uh, flower essences for anxiety. So Isadora, you take it away and talk about these essences. All right. Thank you, Stephen. Well, the preeminent flower essence for stress and anxiety is the five flower formula. And that's the alternative to the Bach trademark name brand of rescue remedy. It's used for shock, anxiety, overwhelm, also when people are unconscious, although and there's a special way to use it then. It can be used for freaking out just in general. It helps to stabilize the physical and emotional body to ground us and help us to be present instead of getting that way out feeling when we're overwhelmed or upset. People find it very beneficial to take four drops in a small amount of water or other liquid and sip it slowly. You can also take it directly under the tongue. If someone is unconscious, you want to apply it externally. Um, some years ago, I was at a music venue and noticed that a man had passed out. We don't know the reason why. He was kind of going in and out of consciousness. And of course, we phoned an ambulance in that case. But I took out the five flower that I had in my pocket 
and put a drop on each wrist and repeated it. And he kind of jolted awake, jolted too, much to the amazement of other people in the area. So it's an important remedy to have in your home emergency kit. Some people leave it in a car. It's best to keep flower essences upright. That way, the brandy that preserves them won't dissolve the rubber stopper at the top and keep them away from aromatherapy and other things that are giving off a scent that could migrate through the rubber stopper into the flower essence bottle itself. Mm -hmm. Um, so thanks, Isra. I've used this remedy um, quite a bit. Uh, Nature Sunshine has a, a, a remedy called Distress Remedy that contains these five flowers and several other ones. Um, and I've used uh, the Rescue and the the uh, five, five flower remedy uh, quite a bit, where there's been a, an accident or a disaster or some kind of uh, immediate shock or trauma. Um, and, and everybody is kind of a little bit dazed and everybody's a little bit stressed. And I've actually gone around and administered some to everybody involved. And it's amazing how within just you know 10 or 15 minutes, everybody's settled down, everybody's calmer, everybody's feeling better. So this is a remedy that's always in my first aid kit. OK, let's go ahead and talk about these next ones. Beautiful. Well, white chestnut is for mental obsession, 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 when the mind is going over and over problems or just overactive. And perhaps you fall asleep and wake up in the night and your mind is going over problems from the day before or thinking of all the things you need to accomplish the next day. For that, I tell people to keep a little notebook by their um, nightstand and note down the things they need to remember for the next day. But it helps address sleeplessness and again, when we're obsessing about a situation. Red chestnut is for over-worry for other people. It's when we anticipate problems for them. And sometimes we call it the mother's remedy. <clears throat> Some years ago, my next door neighbor phoned me in a panic on a school day at 5 PM because her college attending daughter was not home, but her car was parked in the driveway not something I normally think of as an emergency. And I assured her her daughter was fine. She was just sitting at the kitchen table talking to me. But of course, we gave her mother, um, we gave the neighbor some red chestnut to work with, and that kind of eased her over-worry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I know that sometimes when people have that um, uh, chattering mind, and they cannot go to sleep, or they wake up in the middle of the night, and they can't go to sleep because they just uh, have thoughts and thoughts and thoughts and thoughts. So that's really where this remedy could come in handy, is if you find yourself lying in bed, unable to go to sleep with all those just thoughts running through your head, or you wake up in the middle of the night, and all those thoughts are running through your head. Let's go to the next one here. OK. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Both a white chestnut and the red chestnut are in the Flourish Flora Sleep formula. It helps to quiet the mind, release over worry, anxieties about the future, reduce stress, and just help you let go. Travelers find it useful. It can be used for children also. And I'm finding, I'd like to share, that there are many um, school-aged um, children and teens who have trouble sleeping, and it's because they're on the computer playing games and often work type um, video games right before bed. So that's good to give that a break an hour before bedtime. Um, someone who tried this the first time said, I felt like I went weak in my knees. I just let go. So it's quite beautiful for that. Yeah. Someone just asked a question, which, where do you get, get these, um, which we, we're going to kind of address at the end. But I don't say all of the remedies that we're going to be talking about tonight, um, the primary place that Isadora and I get our remedies from is from Flower Essence Services, uh, located in Nevada City, um, California, or FES Services. And so most of the re remedies we're talking about tonight are available from them. OK, let's go on to this one. Yes. Elm is for overwhelm. That's the one so I named. need right now. <laughs> <laughs> Uh-oh. I think a lot of us need it right now. It's to help us feel that we're up to a ta the task at hand. Perhaps someone received a promotion and they just don't know if they can handle the new responsibility. Someone is about to enter high school and they, they're fearful that it's going to be too much work for them. So it helps with overwhelm. Also, because of um, layoffs and cutbacks, some people find they have more work piled on their desk, more responsibility. And this helps with the overwhelm feeling. 
And thus, uh, so you've got the the elm there in overwhelm. That's a good way to help remember this remedy, isn't it? Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm overwhelmed. <laughs> okay. Yes. And when people feel overwhelmed or they have um, a shock to their system, whether it's physical or emotional, sometimes the energy kind of gets balled up, for lack of a better word, in the belly area. They might notice they have cold hands, cold feet, and the arnica flower essence helps to circulate that energy. Um, I worked with someone who um, went back to their hometown after many years, after a traumatic childhood, and they were kind of re-traumatized. And when we worked with them, we could feel their energy was not circulating through the body properly. It was all congested in the belly area. And by mouth, you can take the Arnica flower essence. Next slide, please. It's, it's already up. Sometimes there's a delay on your screen. Ah. Arnica's up. Oh, oh, but the next slide. Oh, you want to go past Arnica? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. And besides taking the Arnica flower essence by mouth, you can use it as the Seasons of the Soul Arnica Allay Blend that has aromatherapy, flower essences, and they're in a beautiful, um, well-formulated oil base that massage therapists love. So you can use it yourself to massage your belly, add some to the bath. If you have a certain area of your body that tends to be cold or cool to the touch, perhaps the feet, you can use it that way also. And there was a question asked, which I think this is a good good point to kind of bring this out, about the difference between flower essences and homeopathic remedies. And Arnica, you know, is used as a homeopathic to treat uh, bruising and injuries where the skin isn't broken. Um, and so it, it is actually, you know, kind of heals the, the physical trauma. Homeopathic remedies are a little more precisely done than uh, flower essences, which aren't diluted near so much. Um, and, and so they're a much lower dilution. And flower essences are made usually by infusing the flowers in, in pure water in the sun and then, and then diluting that. But I think of Arnica as a remedy that you use when you've been uh, emotionally uh, bruised, you know? Like, like when you have that trauma or that shock to your system, that it helps with that kind of like uh, getting, getting bruised more on an emotional level rather than on a physical level. Mm -hmm. And then the flower essences, um, the Arnica Allay, is even for when there's a physical um, trauma also to help get the energy moving and circulating. Also, um, flower essences, which are made by floating flowers at the peak of their bloom in water, do not have a proving as homeopathics um, go through. So historically, when they were determining what homeopathic remedies would address which issues. They would give, for example, someone in perfect health the remedy of, um, let's say, onion, and suddenly their nose would run and their eyes would water, and they'd say, aha, now we have the homeopathic remedy for those issues, whereas flower essences don't go through approving. And homeopathics can be diluted into up to a million or more dilutions through a whole series of bottles, whereas flower essences have the mother essence than the stock bottle that you purchase because it's in stock in the store and one next level which is a dose bottle and in um, future classes we'll be talking about how to make dose bottles. Uh -huh. Okay. Yes. When people are anxious often they start they notice that they're breathing in a shallow way. Or you can notice a friend that you're talking to them and something is a hot button issue because their breathing becomes shallow. California Valerian, which is a flower essence from the Range of Light kit, a newer flower essence kit, helps to promote a peaceful confidence about the future. Some people who find that they're turning to sleeping pills or sedatives um, and notice that they breathe shallowly, might find the California Valerian part of a program that helps them um, to release some of the anxieties. Okay. Fuchsia is for hyper-emotionality due to deep-seated problems. Sometimes as a child we weren't allowed to express ourselves, and it can show up as digestive issues, headaches, allergies, um, people who vastly overreact to minor things, let's say a glass drops and breaks, and, and suddenly it's a hysterical panic in the house. So fuchsia helps us to be more balanced, 
in ad and addressing things for our healing. Yeah, I one of the things I like fuchsia for is some is for people who also kind of transmute one emotion into another. So I've seen people that every time they like um, they should be getting angry and they're trying to show anger, they laugh or or they cry. Um, and and so they can't really express their emotion in a genuine, authentic way. They kind of like transmute what they're really feeling into an emotion they feel comfortable expressing. Thank you. Oak, yes, we know the people who need oak. Those are the people who are always the strong one, take on a lot, lots of responsibility, and you can identify them often because they only get sick on weekends and on vacation. Yep, those are the people that need oak. They need to be in their power, know their limits, know when to stand strong and when to give it a rest, when to let things go. Yeah, oak is a, is a very interesting remedy that way because the oak, Matthew Wood um, describes it as an herbal remedy um, with its energetic thing is the mighty oak has fallen that you know when you have this really strong person that is really dependable and they just have pushed themselves to their limit and they feel like they just can't cope anymore that's a good indication for oak mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. the flourish post trauma stabilizer helps when there's been long-term stress or to heal even stress and things from the past. It does contain the five flower remedy, the Bach rescue remedy alternative, and it can help us when we feel emotionally numb. Sometimes it's indicated when people have traumatic memories or nightmares on an ongoing basis, and anyone who's been through a recent trauma, such as being um, a member of the armed forces or a refugee, someone who's had other great shocks would benefit greatly from working for a period of time with a post-trauma stabilizer. Typically, the five flower formula is used just as needed. I've met people who say that's part of their everyday program. No, we only use it when we need it, and five flower can be used on an ongoing basis, perhaps for a week or two if that's all you have and it's a giant issue, but better to move over to the post-trauma stabilizer to address things on a deeper level. Okay. Now we're going to talk a little about fear. And I mentioned that fear is really at the root of anxiety. And fear is the emotion we feel when we sense we're in danger. So it doesn't matter whether the danger is real or whether it's just in our imagination or, you know, I mean, when you're thinking about all of the bad things that could happen in the future, you don't know that those things are going to happen, but you're still going to feel fear because your brain is perceiving the presence of danger. And when you um, are chronically getting into a state of fear, that can lead you to you feeling stressed. It can give you that feeling of anxiety. It can also create obsession and addiction. And I find that... Uh, a lot of people say that fear is, you know, a, a really negative emotion and you shouldn't feel it. Well, we do need fear. There are some things that are healthy fears. That is, you know, being afraid of falling off a cliff so you don't get too close to it or being afraid of getting burned so you use a hot pad when you're pulling something out of the stove. But a lot of our fears are born of our exaggeration, our imagination and conditioning over stuff that's happened in the past. And right now, you know, one of the things that I have a problem with is the, the media tends to really feed into fear. So you, you start watching the news and you get all these stories that are constantly throwing you off balance by triggering fear um, in, in you. And it, you, we really need some remedies to counteract that because you get into this mindset of fear with the economy and everything and it literally becomes contagious and you know makes the problem even bigger than it is. Okay, take it away, Isadora. Thank you. So the Flourish Fearless Blend helps us when we are anxious, when we feel panicked and need to stabilize ourselves. Some people, the reason they have difficulty sleeping is because of um, fears that they have not addressed and anxiety. Also, fear can come up when we face new situations, a new job, we're moving, um, perhaps there's been a divorce and a family um, is now 
becoming a blended family, and we're anxious about that. So Flourish Fearless is a blend that's easy to work with. Aspen is for the fear of the unknown. People who are easy to frighten, they're startled easily. It helps them to have trust in facing things that are uncertain in the future, and all of us have things that we feel uncertain about. Further, it provides um, and supports confidence when there's things we're not even quite sure what we're fearful of. You know, aspen is, of course, a tree that I'm very familiar with because it grows in the mountains up above um, you know where I live, and it's called the quaking aspen in because the um, or the Latin name is Populus tremuloides, because the leaves shake in the slightest breeze. It only takes the littlest ruffling of a breeze to get this to shake. So when when you have that like thing where you feel that you know constant and kind of tense anxiety, afraid that all the little things just kind of are constantly triggering. Um, or when you see someone, when I've seen someone um, doing emotional healing work, and they're kind of like just kind of qu shaking a little bit, and you can tell they're afraid of something, but they can't really identify what it is, then I've had really good um, experiences with this essence. Mm -hmm. Mimulus is for fear of things known about. For example, someone's afraid to take the bus or the train. It's, it, they tend to withdraw in the face of just everyday challenges. Perhaps people who are slightly agoraphobic would benefit from it. It imparts courage to face life. I, um, this is a, a monkey flower. And if you look at the, the flower, the reason I call it monkey flowers is you, it gives you kind of the image of, of a little monkey face sticking its tongue out. Uh, at you. And I always think of the monkey flowers, because there are several of them that are used as, as flower remedies, as things that help us face things in ourselves that we don't want to look at. And this one is, is a really good remedy just for helping people face their fears in general. Um, it, you know, fear is not something that we, if we try to run away from our fears, they're just going to keep chasing us. I often, I say this like, is like the, um, the monster in the the child's nightmare. As long as you're running away from the monster, it keeps chasing you. And when you turn and confront it um, and have the courage to confront your fears and face them, then you start getting them to back down and they don't chase you anymore. Rock Rose helps us to be courageous when we face major challenges. Sometimes in situations we feel terrified or feel panicked for those who are just in survival mode. And even they feel like it's all over. There's no hope. It's just over. Stephen, you have anything you'd like to add? No. OK. Red clover, yes, I've used that quite a bit. It's when there's group anxiety, and it helps us to have equanimity and balance in the face of it. So. Um, I've been living in Jamaica for part of the year for a long time, and whenever there's a hurricane about to strike, or possibly about to strike, everyone gets goes about gathering up things, emergency supplies, boarding up windows. But even when that part is done and things are quiet, you can feel the palpable fear. And this helps me to have clarity about what I'm feeling and differently from what other people are feeling. Yeah, this is the the pea family, which this one is in. Um, you heard the expression peas in a pod. So it's like you know the the pea family has these legumes, like the beans and peas that have all these little um, seeds together in a pod. And so the pea family almost has this thing with relationship with other people. And if you look at this uh, red clover, you'll notice that it's white towards the center, and then the flower becomes purple towards the outside. And what this does is it actually helps you separate from the group mindset or the mob mentality. So I remember some years, uh, many years ago, I was down in Australia and there was a, uh, an announcement about a stock market drop. And we we're sitting in the airport and all these people are just like, you can feel this fear and I'm starting to feel this fear. And then I thought, what, what am I worried about? I don't own any stocks. Uh, <laughs> and it was like, you know, I'm not, but, but what happens is, and this, this is the kind of thing that happens with, um, 
with any major, you know, incident like the you know report of a drop in the stock market, market or even the we just passed the anniversary of uh, 9/11, and you know something that happens and there's this you know panic that spreads through the group like a, a mob mindset, and this actually helps you separate from that so that you are not like getting caught up in the in the mob mindset, and I think this is a really valuable um, remedy if you have a tendency to just, you know, be sucked into that kind of uh, mentality. Pink yarrow. Yes, our dear pink yarrow. When you look at the flower, can you see that it looks like a collection of little umbrellas? And just as um, the regular umbrellas protect us from the elements, the physical elements, so pink yarrow protects us emotionally. It helps support emotional clarity. This is my issue. That's your issue. I can see it. I observe it. I need not internalize it. It supports healthy boundaries. And it's particularly useful for people who do healing work or work with the public, such as hairdressers who listen to people's problems all day, bartenders too, massage therapists, and all forms of healers and intuitives. Um, often a child who needs pink yarrow, you'll know that they need it because someone walks into the house upset, no, there's no noise, no verbal exchange, but the child starts crying because they can feel it as an emotional pressure. And this will strengthen them and provide clarity. Yeah, this is a great remedy for people who were just overly empathetic. In fact, uh, do we have white yarrow coming up too? No. Mm -mm. Okay, Cause, because both the yarrows generally help you differentiate between what your what's going on inside of you and outside of you. They help with what we call boundaries. But mm -hmm. I have a great story where you mentioned a hairdresser. My friend who's a hairdresser um, came in one day uh, when I had a shop up in Payson and she says, I can't stand it. I come in, uh, these women come in and while I'm doing their hair, they talk about their problems, they talk about their PMS, they talk about their husbands, they talk about their children, blah, blah, blah. And by the end of the day, I'm totally depressed without having listened to everybody's problems. I said, I know just the remedy for you. And I mixed mm -hmm. up a mixture of both yarrow and pink yarrow, gave it to her. Three days later, she comes back beaming. She says, it works. She says, I listen to their problems. I'm empathetic, but when they walk out the door, there are problems walk out with them. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. And actually in the, um, in the next slide, there is the white yarrow. I didn't have okay. it as an individual one. And that's part of the yarrow environmental solution. So that helps with sensitivities, not just emotionally, but environmentally. Some people know, and other people, it's an underestimated um, they're un they don't realize how much they're affected by environmental pollution, such as radiation, being in heavy electrical fields in offices and factories. So this helps strengthen you so you're not depleted by those environments. And um, the new um, computer screens don't do it quite as much, but the old ones with the cathode, cathode ray tubes, um, computers definitely were hard on lots of people. Yeah, and microwaves and all that kind of thing. Right. Mm -hmm. And then to help us stay grounded and present, we have the Flourish Grounding Green. It connects us with nature. Even people who live in environment, in urban environments need to feel that connection to the rhythms of nature and the cycles of the earth. It helps us align our awareness with the life-giving force of the earth and helps us when there's a feeling of despair or even apathy about environmental changes and challenges, rather. And the next slide. Okay. And, and then when we see what's going on in the environment, we need to take action. And the Flourish Active 8 supports that. It helps us to overcome feelings of apathy, resignation, and even procrastination. Because there's always something we can do, whether it's in our own home or becoming part of a group that's working towards positive change. So it helps us clarify our focus and sparks us into positive action. And sometimes when we're taking action on bigger issues, we might feel discouraged when there are setbacks or challenges, and this supports us in continuing to be active. Um, I will share that someone tried this in a class I taught at um, a co-op in La Crosse, Wisconsin, 
And the next day when I saw the woman, she said, you know, I went home and I looked at my junk room, not the junk drawer, the junk room, and I've been wanting to clear it out and organize it for so long, and after taking the Flourish Activate, I went home and I stayed up all night and got that room under control. I feel so good now. <laughs> That's a great story. <laughs> Mountain Pride. Yeah. Right. We all need the courage to stand up and confront rather than back away from or retreat. Um, and um, so Mountain Pride helps support that. It gives us that male, warrior-like, positive ability to confront and take a stand for what we believe in. When you look at the picture, you can see this very upright, brilliant, I'm not shy, mountain pride flower, and look what's surrounding it. What seems like um, insurmountable op obstacles, but here it stands strong. Yeah, and this is a really, really important remedy for anybody who's facing a lot of challenges and a lot of things that are scaring them, and they need to have that ability, you know, to stand up to what is, you know, confronting them and, and fight back and have that, that, that courage and that strength of will. And, you know, some people find it difficult to know the difference between being aggressive and being assertive. So I think of Mountain Pride as helping us to be assertive. Yes. The assertive, um, th this has to do with the, actually the next emotion we're talking about here, anger. The, the healthy expression of anger is it allows us to protect ourselves. It allows us to set up healthy boundaries. Uh, and boundaries are basically what separate um, what is in our control from what is out of our control. So when we have healthy boundaries, we take control of our own life. We're in charge of ourselves. And uh, we don't try to take charge of other people, um, which, you know, when people are, are venting anger, they're going out and trying to, to make other people change. But healthy anger isn't trying to make other people change. It's asserting your right to be in control of you and to protect other people you from being harmed by other people. So when you have a healthy relationship with anger, you're able to stand up to things that you need to stand up to and be in charge of your own life and do what you need to do and not let other people intimidate you into doing things that you don't feel good at. So um, uh, flower essences um, that will help this are include cherry plum and others that we're going to hear about from Isadora. Mm -hmm. Cherry plum is one of the five flowers in the five flower formula. It helps us when we're concerned that we're going to lose control and either harm someone else or harm ourselves. We feel like we might have a total breakdown and it helps us to let go and be in trust, to feel protected. Um, I worked with someone who um, was a silent partner but invested all the money in a small business and the partner was reaping the profits and said, I quote, and I'm quoting here, I'd rather see you dead than pay you back. Nice person. So of course, it's a woman who was a very lovely kind of peace and love, vegetarian type of person, was distraught when she discovered, um, she was distraught and dismayed to discover she was having thoughts of, I'm going to burn the business down. It's like, oh my God, that's totally not what I'm about. So cherry plum would help address that feeling, I'm going to lose control and do something wrongful. Okay. Scarlet monkey flower, that's one of my mm -hmm. favorites here. Mm -hmm. For many people, Stephen, it helps when there are feelings of anger and powerlessness. It, if you look at the flower, look at that bright red, almost incredibly angry visage. It helps give us the strength to communicate our deeper emotions and to work with them. Um, Many people get chronic sore throats, right? They're not able to express the anger and frustration of what they're experiencing. Right? Many children are forbidden to express neg so-called negative emotions. Scarlet monkey flower can help them and as adults to begin to process that through. And remember that what I said about monkey flowers, because mimulus, that was a monkey flower. This is another monkey flower. And if you look this one, you can really see how it has that little monkey face kind of like <laughs> staring at you. Um, and a lot of times people have anger inside about something, but they can't even acknowledge that they feel anger um, because they've 
suppressed it so deep. And this is absolutely one of the most, the best essences for helping people get in touch with that really uh, deep uh, anger energy and make make peace with it and learn how to use it constructively. So I've had a lot of good experiences with helping people confront anger using this particular um, flower remedy. Willow. Mm -hmm. When we think of a willow tree, we think of the long limbs flowing gracefully in the breeze. And it helps to release feelings of bitterness and resentment as a flower essence. It helps us to release the feeling that things are not or were not fair. Instead, they're all just lessons. But it's hard when you're in it to see that. It helps us to take responsibility and to flow or adapt to changes in life and to overcome the stuck feeling of, I am a victim. And willow is a very interesting um, plant, too, in that, like you mentioned, it has um, long, flexible branches. I mean, like when Native Americans made sweat lodges and so forth, you, you, you bend the willows because they bend really easily, but they don't break. So they've got this nice, flexible strength. And you think about willow was also a traditional remedy for arthritis, where you get stiff and painful joints that don't move properly. So as a flower remedy, it helps overcome that internal stiffness that, that uh, makes us want to resist what is instead of just, you know, being able to let go of it uh, and, and move on with uh, what we need to do, which is what forgiveness is really all about, is being able to just let go of the past and move on into the future and, um, and, and take charge. Do you have anything? Um, I, want to I, think add to that? You covered it. I think you covered that beautifully. Great. Now, pine. Ah, that's for feelings of um, guilt and self-blame. When we criticize ourselves over things that happened in the past, past, it helps us forgive ourselves. I know someone who unfortunately was in one of the planes that went into the Twin Towers in New York City. And um, she was on her way to see her son. He was um, performing, it was the opening of a play, and he was one of the performers. He was racked with guilt that his mother passed because she was coming to see him. But the truth is, she decided what day to come, what flight, what um, airliner to take. And so Pine would help address those kind of inappropriate feelings of guilt and self-blame. That's, that's a good story. By the way, someone asked about arthritis for MS stiffness. Not really, because that's that's a different kind of thing. It's not an inflammatory process. It's a, it's a damage in the nerves. Now, um, on the other side of uh, anger is depression. And I talked earlier about the idea of personal boundaries, that is the ability to have uh, control of myself and maintain control of myself and, uh, and protect and defend myself. Well, depression is an emotion where those boundaries are weakened and we uh, lack the ability to defend ourselves or to stay in control of our own lives. And so we, we get this feeling that we're defeated, that somehow we've been, you know, overcome and put into bondage or put into slavery or somehow we're in situations where that we don't like and we have no power to to make decisions or choices that are going to help us change that. Now uh, and this this is really pertinent to what's going on in the world because okay you look at some of the things that are happening in our country you know and you might feel some anger but you know how do you fight against certain things that are happening you know with whatever the federal government is doing or what you know these big corporations are doing when you're just one person and that could lead you to feeling kind of helpless and defeated and so here are some flower essences for that and first is agrimony. That's for people who keep on a happy face no matter what they're really feeling inside. And sometimes they even have trouble acknowledging what they're feeling. Whereas scarlet monkey flower is specifically for feelings of anger and powerlessness, this helps us to unmask or open the door to different emotions. Um, often people who have addictions are trying to keep a happy face on their pain. Um, earlier this year I worked with a woman who was managing a small business and even when she was sharing something sad she had a big smile on her face. She later told me that growing up her father who was an alcoholic insisted that she smile at all times. So she wasn't allowed to exp 
express the normal childhood ups and downs of daily life. And agrimony would help her to unlock the door and go through it to really connect with what she's feeling. Yes, I've had clients come in and they are wearing uh, you know, the nice smiling face and then you feel their pulse and their pulse is just as tense and wiry as can be. And so you know that inside they're just like, you know, bound up in knots and tense and stressed. But on the outside, they look perfectly relaxed and happy. And I call those agrimony people. Mm -hmm. Tension is when we feel discouraged after a setback. Perhaps work was lost. You wanted a job. You didn't get it. You no longer own a home that you had lived in for many years, wanted to get an apartment and we were turned down, tried for a new position, didn't get it, or a promotion. May, when you feel like you're a failure, failure, Gentian helps impart courage and the faith to carry on. Gorse is when we feel hopeless about the whole world situation. It promotes optimism, renews us, to connect with the hope that's always there. Can, can we dump this in the drinking water? <laughs> <laughs> On the whole planet? Yeah, that would yes. Be. How, how about if we just get a, um, an airplane and kind of spray it over places? <laughs> yes, actually. That'd be great. I did a talk um, not long ago. When I spoke about Gorse, a woman in the class said that she had just come back from attending college um, in a small town. And there were, um, it was a liberal arts college, and a lot of the students were very angry about the world situation and protesting. But she shared that the whole town had been taken over by gorse. It had become an invasive weed everywhere. So here are the flowers coming to try and heal us. And whenever we see something new in our environment, it's great to connect with it and find out herbally or flower essence wise what it's used for because the plants are trying to get our attention by volunteering in our yard. Yes. Hornbeam, mm -hmm. that's for fatigue, way out of proportion for what's going on in your life. You're sleeping eight hours and you just don't know why you're dragged out. So it's when you're just having struggle and getting through every day. I had that, um, I needed that when I was on a speaking tour once and suddenly I was so tired all the time for no reason after eight, nine hours of sleep. Hornbeam to the rescue, it revitalized, renewed my enthusiasm and helped me to go forward with the task at hand. Sweet chestnut is for what's called the dark night of the soul, when you're in the deepest of despair. Mm -hmm. It helps us have faith and to learn when there are adverse circumstances. It's one of the flowers also in the five flower formula. And that addresses the dark night. And next slide, please. Okay. And so does from the Australian bush flower essences, Warata. It's for the dark night of the soul also and helps us to adapt and respond when there are crises. Ian White, who started um, and makes the flower essences for the Australian bush flower essences, said that in his search for Warata, he traveled far and wide and there was only one blooming Warata flower anywhere to be found. So it's like the last survivor. I used that once when I was going through some difficult personal situations. And when I took it one evening, I, I literally could feel like like a cloud of despair just passing away from me. Mm -hmm. I also would like to share that I often recommend that people begin taking a, a new flower essence at bedtime because often they'll wake up and notice a difference. Because um, the flower essences often work on a subtle level. The okay. um, question was, can hornbeam supplement a thyroid medication for an already diagnosed hyperthyroid. I've never heard of, I, I don't know, I'm not familiar with hornbeam as a remedy. Um, we're talking about emotional things rather than physical health problems. Mm -hmm. And as we know, thyroid problems are a huge issue. In my experience this year, it's almost half of women in the United States have difficulties with their thyroid. And although it's on a physical level and there are physical reasons for a thyroid issue, I say there's nothing to be lost but a few dollars trying a bottle of the Hornbeam. See if that does help you. Perhaps it will address things that the, the thyroid medication isn't, and you'll see what happens. Just try it. 
Okay. There's no way to harm yourself with a flower essence. That's the beauty. At the most, you've just spent a few dollars that you didn't need to. Yeah, that's okay. the thing with flower essence. Whenever I've given a flower essence that uh, that wasn't appropriate for a person, the worst thing that happened is it didn't work. Exactly. <laughs> and with the Flourish um, Illumin, that blend, you know that it's working. It helps when they're blues. Instead of trying to distract ourselves from the blues or medicate, it helps us to work with that blue feeling rather than negate it. It helps to uplift us and gain the wisdom of that depth of emotion. It speaks to us of the most profound soul issues, helping when we need self-reflection and to reconnect with what's important in our lives. And not only does it support the balance of light and dark on the emotional level, it helps when there's seasonal affective disorder. And those of you in the um, northern states know all about this in the winter. I've had numerous people swear that this is the remedy for them every winter. It helps circulate the light. Well, that's great. Well, I like what you said about working with the blues because the year I turned 50, uh, I was 49. It was right before my 50th birthday. I was feeling a little bit down, a little depressed. And rather than, you know, run to the doctor or whatever, I just decided to take some time off work and and get in touch with what I was feeling. And oftentimes, um, the answer lies in getting in touch with what's really going on in your emotions. And when I figured out what was bothering me and made a decision to make some changes in my life, it immediately lifted. But one of the things that I find flower essences do is they help you with that process of getting in touch with what's going on inside of you so you can see clearly what it is that you can do to, to take charge of your circumstance and change. Exactly. They say every problem has a gift. So by working with something like Lumen, in that dark feeling, you can find the gift to renew yourself and come out. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, Isadora, there's a key on my keyboard, on the keyboard there, I think, that you can um, turn off the speakers on the computer, hit the mute. I think that would stop us getting any feedback. It's on the, the top row of keys on the computer. Um, okay, well, while I'm talking here, you're welcome to come over and do that part. <laughs> okay, so, I will. Okay. We talk so about we mustard. Have, um, mustard, which here's a sunshiny yellow flower, and it can be for blues that appear for no obvious reason. They just appear. Mustard, sometimes you'll see a whole field spread out and covered with these beautiful yellow flowers. And although there's always a reason for the blues, even if we're not totally aware of it, mustard can help address it. Um, it gives us, um, helps to bring emotional balance when there's depression that comes after a manic kind of experience. And obviously, manic depressive behavior needs more than just a flower essence, but this could be something you could work with. Someone asked, could mustard help bipolar disorder? Right, and definitely something like bipolar needs much further um, investigation as to sources and further evaluation and treatment, but no harm in working with us to see what it does. Also, if, I, um, if it's helpful, also if I were working with someone in that situation, um, when they're in one of the extremes or the other of the emotions, I might work with the five flower to see if that helps stabilize the emotions a little bit. Yeah. But I wouldn't depend just on flower essences. Yeah. Right. Ah, wild rose. Someone's stuck in a dead-end job. They feel it's hopeless. It'll never get better. This is what my life is. They're apathetic. And it's further um, useful when there's a lingering illness. Um, we've all known people who've had a little cold for two or three weeks. OK, but they need to kind of recommit to life, arouse their energy to get going, get things moving, and make changes. Yeah, it's a it's a heart healing remedy, and your part of your heart isn't just love. Part of your heart is having courage to to deal with the things of life. Like when we say take heart, it's like take hope, have have courage, have faith. You you know, life goes on. And the Flourish Magenta Self Healer is a flower essence blend of beautiful pink and red color flowers. It helps to 
spark immunity and vitality. It's a good beginning essence for people who, well, I think I'd like to get better. I guess I should be taking care of my health. Yeah, here it is. And it has a beautiful self-heal, which is native to the Great Lakes area. It's one of the places that it grows. Self-heal is in the mint family, although it's not mint-scented. And it's used to awaken healing and remove what is stuck. Right? Don't people have a conflict about being well? Native people um, would make a poultice by chewing it or macerating it, putting it on where there was a deep splinter and bandaging that. And the selfie would extract even the deepest of splinters. So here we're extracting the deepest conflict about being well on our inner level. It helps us after there's been personal or environmental tra traumas. It's a good um, beginning remedy, as I said, or foundational remedy. If you don't know where to start, start right here. And it's beautiful. Um, someone asked, is self-heal Monarda? And no, it's different. Monarda is uh, bee balm or bergamot, and self-heal is, uh, is a different plant. Um, I have had a number of clients where I've been working with them on a physical level, and it's just like they can't get anywhere. You know, they... they uh, it's like their 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 ability of the body to heal itself is just like not uh, kicking in gear, and I've given them the self heal flower essence, and it has actually sparked the their herbal and supplement program and other things to start working because it awakens their inner recuperative ability. Forage buoys up the heart. It's for cheerful courage in facing life's challenges. Some people feel that they're depressed, but if we really explore it in um, a conversation, we find that they're just heavy heart, heavy hearted. I worked with an um, older woman who was a widow, and an older gentleman wanted to date her, possibly leading to marriage, and she just didn't have the heart for it. She told us she was depressed, but instead we realized she just needed the courage to face him and say, we can be social friends, but we're not going to go into a further kind of relationship. So it brings the sunshine and lifts the heart. Okay. Um, the Borage, I had a lady once who was, you know, kind of feeling suicidal because she had gone on a mission in South America, had picked up a parasite. She'd just been struggling and struggling to get well for so long that she just, just wanted to give up on life. And within a couple of days of just taking the Borage flower essence, she just it renewed her desire to live, her desire to, to go forward. And here's the beautiful Zinnia. It's for lighthearted playfulness and joy. When we're high in anger, we're low in playfulness. And the zinnia will promote spontaneity, the ability to laugh even at yourself, and to have fun, lighthearted fun, to swing on the swings in the park. When you look at the zinnia flower um, around the center, it looks like little children holding hands, dancing around. And that's how I like to think of zinnia. Also, zinnias actually come in multiple colors, and they're the, they're the perfect flower for a children's garden, so they bring out the play for a child in all of us. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to talk about grief. Grief, which is, you know, sadness, I mean, is, is the emotion that allows us to let go of things that we have lost. The grieving process, you know, even though it hurts, is actually a healthy thing because it allows us to, to release it. In fact, if you want to help that energy, you just think of the taking a, and then, ah, sigh. It's the letting go. And it helps us discharge the pain. And when we discharge the pain and we let go, it opens up a space inside of us to receive new things to take the place of what we've lost. When we don't go through the grieving process, what happens is we're still clinging to what we've lost and we don't have room in our lives to let in something new. So we have to go through the grieving process to empty out and let go so that new things can flow to us. And these um, flower essences are, are we're going to talk about next are going to help with this. And I, there's quite a few questions that have been asked and we are going to have a question and answer period at the end. And so, uh, some of these questions I am saving and I will we will get to them at the end. So go ahead. Is Thank uh, you. Herbosanta. So Herbosanta, 
Yerba Santa flower essence helps when there's a constricted feeling in the chest. You're holding in the grief, right? The lungs are in the chest. And this helps you to release grief and sadness, helps address the deeper issue again so we can clear that out and make room for the new. The Flourish Grief Relief Blend helps us to address grief and loss, helps us when we feel empty, and helps us to empty out what's stuck with grief and make space for the new. It's useful when a relationship is ending. It doesn't have to have already ended. It can, we can be in our grieving process as we realize things are transitioning. It allows us to gain greater insight and wisdom as to what we're suffering and really experiencing. Golden eardrops is a very, that's a very unusual flower. Sometimes I think of it as it should be called golden eye drops because it has, um, a, it's used to express sadness and grief and sometimes it helps tears to flow. Many people have suppressed so much grief that they're, they're unable to cry, which is pretty sad. The Africans say a person who will not cry is a social time bomb. And I've worked with someone who was unable to cry when I gave her the golden eardrops during a healing session. One little tear came from each eye, and that was the beginning of her healing process. Wonderful. Life and so, career. Mm -hmm. This is a time where people are kind of rethinking things. And there are flower essence that help us to move past anxiety, the fears, the depressed feeling and the anger about what's going on in our environment. It helps us, they help, can help us to hear the call anew. What is it we want to, re, to do with our life? What should we do for our next stage, um, of the next stage of bringing our gift in or our unfolding in life? Go ahead. Large is for competent people who won't even try because they doubt themselves. I know I'm going to be a failure, so I'm, why bother trying? I find that it will impart confidence. And often we see, um, I've seen the children, the teenage children are in their 20s of successful professional parents who are the big old slackers, just want to stay home, listen to music, play video games, etc. because they say, well, my parents are successful and I could never reach where they have reached in life, so why bother? And this helps them to kind of take a chance. Just go ahead. There you go. Learn a new skill. Mm -hmm. Goldenrod helps people to stand in their truth. Perhaps their family said, you know, we don't want you to be a cook. Or um, actually, this, just this year, I worked with a woman who all her life wanted to be a hairdresser. And her family forbid her to do that because they said, um, um, you know, the world doesn't need another hairdresser. But in fact, in working with her and doing some reading work, I realized that her gift was very creative and she'd be great at it. And even though she's working full time, we worked out a way where she could start taking, attending school part time to live her dream. So it helps you to stand up in the face of what your family discouraged you or even others around you might think is not possible for you. It helps you to stand in your truth. Often it's used for teenagers who feel especially subjected to peer pressure. Wild oat is used for life and career decisions. And Dr. Bach, who came up with the wild oat um, flower essence, very wisely foresaw that this would be an issue. Um, it helps you to get clarity about your calling and purpose. And remember, if you think back a few hundred years ago, your father was a shoemaker, you're going to be a shoemaker. And your father was a baker, you're going to be a baker. Right now, all possibilities are there for us, and we need to just get in touch with what's right and go for it. Lady Slipper helps when our career is just a shadow of what we're truly capable of. We're kind of stuck at a lower level than what our abilities are. It can help when there's um, nervous exhaustion and indecisiveness that limits us from connecting with our um, life purpose and destiny. I worked with someone who had a certain career goal and they needed it over an extended period of time but then they were able to connect with the work that they always wanted to do which was their true gift of service in the world.
Penstemon, mm -hmm. Penstemon is for fortitude. It helps us endure until we can overcome. So we can per persevere in the face of all types of tests and challenges. And this is actually uh, that mountain pride that we saw earlier with the growing in the rocks. Both of those are penstemons. Um, there's a bunch of different ones, but all of the penstemons have this very upright growth. And you notice how the flower even looks up like a throat, you know, just speaking its truth, you know, you know, opening up to the world and, and not being afraid. And they often grow in very, very uh, harsh circumstances. Walnut is the link breaker. You know where you want to go, but your boat is tied to the dock. It helps us to make a healthy transition. And um, I know someone who their marriage ended. They needed to sell their house. So this was in a good economy. And the house just was not selling. And they realized that they were emotionally holding on. They knew they need, wanted to sell it and go forward, but they were still kind of tied in to all that the house represented. And by taking walnut, the house immediately sold. There's another thing. Matthew Wood talks about how walnut um, secretes a toxin from the roots that kills other plants that try to grow underneath it. And that includes its own seedlings. And so the walnut hull um, is a soft, spongy thing that actually allows the nut, when it hits the ground, to bounce and roll away, uh, you know, and escape the parent. And so this is also a great remedy if your family has kind of smothered you and kept you from being able to develop yourself as your own unique personality. It helps to break those ties of, of uh, with the past. Uh, it's like the, the, I also think of it as the remedy for emotional parasites, people who are <laughs> hooked to you that you need to get rid of. <laughs> okay, we're going to talk real quickly about our upcoming class, and then we're going to answer some of the questions that have been put to us, and you can also, um, using the little chat dialog, type in some more questions. We, we are going to be doing a three-class um, uh, um, webinar uh, on Monday, uh, September 27th, October 4th, and October 11th. This is going to be a two-hour webinar, unlike tonight, which is a one-hour plus a little extra webinar. And we're going to be covering flower essences for the three phases of life. And that we're talking about healing our childhood wounds, dealing with uh, the adult problems that we face, and then uh, developing the the, the wise elder inside of us, or the, the, the person who has that uh, mature wisdom and, and spirituality and life experience. Uh, the, the class is going to cost $97 if you register by Wednesday the 22nd, it should say, not the 27th. Um, so if, um, if those of you who are members of Tree of Light after the membership program goes into effect on the 15th, um, our members will be able to log into our Tree Light website and get a small discount on that too. So, um, uh, but that isn't up right now. Um, the, you can go to www.treelight.com or call 800-416-2887. Um, if you cannot make the actual live time, don't worry about it. If you register for the class, you'll be sent a password protected, uh, a link to a password protected page. Uh, so you'll have a username and password, and you'll be able to go and download both the handouts and the recordings of the webinar if you miss it, so you can actually study it and review it as often as you want. So this is what we'll be covering in that class. We'll be talking about some of the childhood wounds that people are carrying around inside of themselves that are holding them back as adults. Being an unwanted child, being a child of the wrong sex, meaning your parents wanted a, a boy and you were a girl, uh, problems with birth trauma and bonding issues with parents, lack of healthy mother and father figures in early life, and physical, emotional, and sexual abuse issues. In the uh, flower essences to support uh, the uh, uh, midlife, we're going to be talking about flower essences geared primarily at dealing with problems with relationships, family, and career. How to, you know, have family harmony, how to, you know, help get along better with coworkers and other people that we associate with, uh, flower essences that help us with problems with intimacy and sexuality in relationships, uh, flower essences that help us define our 
mission in life and our career, a little bit about you know menopause, andropause, and, and a midlife crisis. And then for the third session, we're going to talk about the, the um, flower essences for, for dealing with the problems that tend to, to come as we age. But this is also for just deal, helping to develop that um, higher part of ourselves. It deals with things like body image, um, renewing creative inspiration, growing inner peace, developing spiritual growth, uh, support for caregivers of the elderly, um, and, and flower essences that can help us when we're facing challenges with our health, and also some flower essences that can help soothe the, the transition as, as people pass um, or are ready to pass in life. So it's kind of like a, an overview of the three phases of life, and uh, it's going to be a six hours of instruction for just uh, $97. So you know, great class. You can attend anywhere you want to. Uh, anywhere in the world, and like I say, you'll be able to download the recordings and review this information as often as you want. So now we're going to get to the question and answer phase, and I'm going to go ahead and, and go back to a few questions that were asked. Um, someone asked, how does flower essences differ from aromatherapy? Well, if aromatherapy is diffusing the essential oils from a plant, and that's used uh, as a fragrance or it's applied in as lotion. These are made by, uh, as Isidore said earlier, um, floating the flowers in water and sunshine. And then that's preserved with uh, brandy. And then it's diluted once to a, a stock bottle, diluted again to a dosage bottle, and taken as drops under the tongue. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to say that um, the flower essences themselves are actually unscented. So you have the sun imprinting the energy or soul force of the flower in the bowl of water that's been out in the sun for a number of hours. Right, so that's another way that it differs. They're both um, affecting us on many levels, emotionally and physically, but flower essences unscented, aromatherapy scented. And please note that m uh, much of the aromatherapy on the market, especially in commercial products, are um, synthetic fragrances. Yes. Some people have asked about dosages and frequencies and also about how you take them. So go ahead and just introduce briefly about how you take a flower essence and how much and how often. Okay, thank you. So typically you're in the store and you purchase a stock bottle. And from the stock bottle you can take two drops under your tongue when you go to bed, when you wake up, for a total of four times a day. If you're just using something like the five flower for an emergency situation, just use it for the period that's needed. It could be just one one dose of it, and that's fine. Um, you work with essences sometimes for um, two, three weeks, or a month cycle, something like that. Deeper issues you um, cycle in and out. For example, someone who was adopted or abandoned by a parent. You work with those essences for a period of time, work on other issues, pick them back up, cycle them in and out um, over life. The Flourish um, f flower essence blends um, come in a spray bottle. That's how I've seen them. And those can be mist under your tongue or around you one or two sprays, again, typically four times a day. If you're overwhelmed because you're moving and you're looking at the prospect of packing an entire house full of boxes, organizing, moving, unpacking, and dealing with all of that, you might need Elm all day long for a while. <laughs> Maybe the idea is frequent doses, not quantity. So you're just using a few drops at a time, um, and you um, can repeat it even every 5 or 10 or 15 minutes if needed. In the upcoming seminars, we'll go into details on how to make a dose bottle so that the flower essence stock bottle that you purchase, you can use on an um, ongoing basis and extend it out. Um, and you, someone had asked this question, I'm just going to answer it, about uh, taking them. Normally, they're taken as drops under the tongue. However, they can be put into a glass of water and sipped, or they can be put, as Isadora said earlier, on the pulse points on your wrists, um, or you can actually put some into a little bit of a spray uh, water in a little spray bottle and mist them around your face, or people even put them in baths. And 
Someone asked, are they safe for children? And the absolute answer to that is yes. This is an a incredibly safe um, therapy. There are no side effects. There is no reason why you can't try this with anybody of any age with any condition because the worst I've ever seen happen with a flower essence is it didn't do anything. I've never seen one have a negative effect. I would say the only time I, I'd seen it have a, a negative effect was one time I gave a flower essence to a lady who had really big issues with mother-infant bonding with her own mother, and she had a daughter that she wasn't bonding with very well. And I gave her the flower essence. She says, I don't like the way this makes me feel, which, which was she just didn't want to face this issue right now. And that's about the worst that can happen. Okay? And I'll say that... Um Children love the flower essence. They will, once they start using them, they say they're little flower drops from the flower fairies, and they ask, they will demand the flower essences because they know how it makes them feel. I used to say, time for your flower drops. <laughs> My kids loved it. And, mm -hmm. and, and you can make them if you take, if you take out, we'll, we'll cover this in the webinar, but you can actually make them into an alcohol-free base. You can actually put the drops into pure water or water and glycerin and, and make something if you're concerned about the alcohol, but you're only giving a couple of drops. Right, so for a child, you could put it in a little bit of water if you don't want to give the drops right under their tongue. Yeah. Okay. Um, where do you start with flower essences if you are struggling with many of these emotional issues? That's a really good question. You want to address that one, Isadora? Um, hmm, where to start? Well, it depends what's going on. If you're in an immediate crisis, you've lost your job, so you need some things to uplift you and for courage. If you say, my life is pretty stable, but I have some childhood issues, usually something like Holly, which will be covered in detail in future classes, um, for, for helping us to know that we're loved and that there is enough love, and addressing the issues related to mother or father are typically foundational um, essences to work with. The self-heal or magenta, self-healer, are good ones to just get things going. It might even spark us with the insight of what to work on next. Okay, wow, a lot of good questions here. Um, mm -hmm. Let's see, shelf life. Would you tell, tell a little bit about the shelf life of flower essences? Certainly. So as I mentioned earlier, you need to stand the bottle upright so um, the alcohol is only in the glass bottle and not touching the rubber stopper. I have found that they will last many, many years, even past the date that might be stamped on the bottle. That's here. Um, living in Jamaica, where it's very hot and a little more buggy, I find that the bottles only last a few years at a time. Um, if you look at the bottle you know, in the light, turn it sideways a little. If you ever notice any sediment or, or anything, then you really shouldn't be using it. This is an interesting question. Has half the flower itself as a plant or invasive way where empower the use of the essences? Actually, um, Could you repeat the question the, a little slower? I, I was going to, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, repeat it. Does having the flower itself as a plant or in a vase nearby empower the use of the flower essences more strongly? I was going to say, when you actually sit with a live plant, okay, and you just, if you just sat with it and calmed yourself down and just took it in with your eyes and your senses and your smell, the plant would have a very similar influence on you as it does in the flower essence form. Um, that, that's how people actually learn how to use a lot of these plants is by, is by sitting with them. Do you want to add anything to that, Isadora? Sure. Um, Ian White from the Australian Bush Flower Essences said that the indigenous people of Australia, whom we call Aborigines, would say, okay, you have this issue, go sleep amongst those flowers and drink the dew at sunrise. Right. Um, also, I, I, I've, all the time I find people who need an essence have the name of that essence in their life. Like someone lives on Yarrow Street and she has issues of being sensitive to the environment. Or someone, um, I recently was a house guest at a family, um, um, with a family, and they had just planted in their backyard nine aspen trees. So aspen is for fear, and we can symbolically look at it, say it's from the fears behind you. Nine is considered to be the highest number. That's the number for healing. Wow. Um, I will send out an email um, 
after the webinar is over to everyone who registered that will tell you about where you can get flower essences. So um, I'll, I'll, that's going to be easier than trying to say it online. Um, we already, I think, kind of addressed how long to take them. You basically take it as long as you need it, but generally speaking, you don't really need to take a particular essence more than two to four weeks at one time, and then switch to something else. Maybe you'll come back to it later. Um, it's, someone says, is there a flower essence to assist in weight loss? And, and yes, flower essences could assist in the emotional reasons, for example, as, as to why you overeat or why you can't let go of the weight. But those are going to vary from individual to individual. So it, it would be a case-by-case -case basis to deal with whatever emotional issues um, there. And I'll add that um, a couple common ones would be something like self-heal or magenta self-healer, right, to wake up the wish to be well and help to remove conflicts about being well. Cherry plum can be used for those who fear losing control, right, the binge eating. Okay. And then if they're obsessing about food, we have that. In um, some of the classes coming up, we'll talk about body image. We'll also address... Um, some of the reasons for food issues too. Okay. Someone asked what the difference is with this and taking herbal products. And when I use herbs and nutritional supplements, there is an element of working on the mental and emotional level with that. But primarily, we're working on trying to heal the physical body and the physical part of, of our nature. But with flower essences, we're primarily aimed at healing our emotions, at helping us deal with emotional issues and emotional problems, which also affect us physically. So flower essences can affect and help with physical healing, but that's because they're, they're dealing with healing underlying emotional reasons why the person is physically sick. And when you're using herbal remedies or nutritional supplements or dietary changes, you're working primarily on the physical body, which can also help with the emotions. That's why I actually like to do both. Uh, most clients I see get both a, some, an herbal and nutritional program, um, and they also get a flower essence to help them with uh, balancing their emotions because I believe it's an important part of the healing process. Um, there were handouts for the webinar, and I did send out two emails with uh, instructions on where to go to get the handouts, and I will send that again after the webinar is over. Um, tomorrow. Um, and we'll also uh, be covering some, some people have asked about education. Well, obviously, we're doing an educational class and we will have, include some other resources to look at for uh, books and materials that you can get on uh, flower essences. And for someone who said that they registered late because of the difference with the time in Arizona, I, this webinar is being recorded. Um, we will be posting the recording on a web page, and I will be sending everybody a link to that web page where you will be able to download this and look it over again. There will not be a certificate um, for the, the people. I don't normally do certificates for webinar classes because we don't have any, like, tests. or And I don't give certificates for classes where I don't actually have tests or, or things. But just, you know, Isadora and I are talking about and have been talking about and hopefully eventually we will develop a uh, flower essence course, right, Isadora? Yes. Which Taking we that as a big hint and reminder. Okay. <laughs> yes. So we, we actually, I actually want to put together a course on flower essences, so this is kind of a first step towards um, uh, getting that. What did you use for binge eating, Isadora? Um, cherry plum for people who are fearful to lose control and go crazy in the kitchen eating everything in sight. But please remember there are other emotional issues too. Some people are overeating to numb themselves out because they're feeling anxious, right? Or they're feeling emotionally empty so they're attempting to fill the emotional emptiness. And these are things that have to be explored in greater depth. Um, let's see. Are the essences concentrated? No, they're not concentrated. They're, 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 we'll talk about how they're made in the, in the class and a little bit about, you know, um, what we're doing. And again, I'll send out some links about where, to, where you get these. Are flower essences safe for people taking medicines? Definitely. 
It's working on a whole nother level. And even many homeopathic physicians will say it's fine. Just do it at a separate time from the homeopathic remedy. Um, so it's a different system of healing. And to me, whatever supports your wellness, go for it. Someone said they had a flower, uh, said a client who had a flower essence gave her a severe headache. Um, I, that's interesting because I normally haven't seen anything like that happen. Of course, there's always the possibility that it's idiosyncratic that she took the flower essence and the headache came on and they weren't related to each other. The way you test for that is is, is you tell them to discontinue it, try it again in another day. If, if, it, if it has the same effect, then it could be. But in that case, I would say that it's touching on an emotional issue that she does mm -hmm. not want to deal with. And right. so she, the tension is her trying to hold back. The headache is coming from holding back, wanting to face that particular emotional issue. And if that's the case, you can't. And some people have asked um, uh, about the, the things like using flower essences for specific physical health problems. And that's not how these are used. These are used to address the underlying emotional state of the person, which then can help facilitate physical healing. These are not remedies for specific physical uh, problems. So, it, so you can't just say, okay, here's a flower remedy for uh, tri, uh, trigeminal neuralgia. Uh, I, I closed it up, but um, neuralgia or uh, some of the other things. Someone mentioned about put a book um, by Deborah Crandon putting flower essences on acupuncture points, which is entirely um, possible. Right. Some people um, feel that, that that adds something. In my experience, it doesn't. In my experience, it, it just works. We don't need to take another layer of challenge and difficulty. This is a method where we can inexpensively take responsibility for our well-being, and we don't need an outside authority to necessarily be instructing. I hope that's okay I said that. Yeah. And I'm going to just take a few more questions, and then we're basically out of time. Um, what was the essence recommended for forgiving oneself? Pine flower essence for inappropriate guilt and self-blame and forgiving ourselves for mistakes. Pine. Okay. Recommendations for children who struggle with rage and frustration. Flower essences. Well, we have to find out what's the source of the anger and frustration. Sometimes there are problems at school. I always ask, what was their birth like? Um, it's okay if I say something quick about this, Steve? Go ahead, yes. Um, sometimes when children are induced, um, you know, the cervix isn't dilating and then they, the, they, it ends up being a cesarean birth. So the child's head was beating against the cervix or they were held back. Literally, my sister was held back when she was being born because the doctor was not there to attend. So the nurse used a pad to hold my sister back and she has real issues with anger and rage. The same essences that work for adults, scarlet monkey flower, et cetera, can, can be used to address it. But I also would be checking out what's going on, not only at school, but at home, when the parent is not present, whether there's, other, um, whether there's some form of abuse or trauma that also needs to get recognized and dealt with. And when you're struggling with, this is answering a question someone has asked, when you're struggling with a lot of emotional issues and you see a lot of things going on here, which you will, Pick one of them that's sort of the a most immediate concern and work on that one. Or you can actually pick several essences that were working on two or three of the major things you want. And you can combine them into one dosage bottle and then take it just as one remedy. And I, I do this uh, a, a lot and we will be covering that sort of thing more in the class. We have someone from Argentina. Um, Pardon me, pardon me, I want to say something here. No. They, the person struggling with many issues may need to start with something like the Flourish post-trauma stabilizer. So that helps to kind of stabilize things, and then they can work on other issues next. Can you be allergic to these? Um, not that I'm aware of. You could no. be allergic to, can you be a person be allergic to brandy? I mean, I suppose they could be. Remember, there's no actual 
herbal or flower component in the flower essences. The individual flower essences are just the vibration or the soul force of the flower imprinted in water and preserved with brandy. The flower essence blends sometimes will have an aromatherapy component to them, so that you would check for that. But no, I've never seen anyone allergic ever. And if there is ever any hesitation, even for people with environmental illness and severe allergies, use it externally. Drop it on your head. Put it on your wrist. Miss the air around you. You'll get it that way. Okay. We're going to do two more, and then we're going to have to, to cut it off. Uh, okay. The, uh, let's see, we have uh, about flower essences for pets. Okay. Yes, Adora. So, you know, well, the question is, oh. do, the, do the pets' emotions work the same as humans? So can you use the same flower essences with pets that you use with people, basically, is the question. A big yes to that. There is a blend called Animal Rescue Formula, or ARF for short. That's from the Flower Essence Service, I can say. They're, um, same thing, animals angry, animals upset, animals fearful. Address it. Address it that way. And I'll just go ahead and toss in here that... Um, um, dogs especially will become very anxious during um, some dogs during thunderstorms. The reason for that is they feel that they're under attack. They hear the loud noise, but they don't know where it's coming from, so they're in their fear. So we would give them something like aspen. You can give the five flower and see if that doesn't help. If um, if so, if you got, any of you did not get the uh, email about the handouts. The handouts are can be found at Modern Herbal Education, three words all run together, modernherbaleducation.com, um, under the heading webinar uh, recordings. And there's also the links if someone came in late on this one and wants to get in on the next one that we're doing uh, later this evening. There's a link to register for the later one if you want on that same page. So that's Modern Herbal education.com and like I said I will again um, send an email and if some of you registered like at the last minute I may not have gotten your email address to get that um, uh, done so one last um, question I have been dealing with candida and viruses even parasites seems like forever what emotion could be the cause of all this if you don't have an answer, I have a suggestion. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm just taking a moment to gather my thoughts on that. So to me, the person's immune system is run down um, by challenges. Maybe they have to learn about healthy boundaries between themselves and others. Go ahead, Stephen. Yeah, one of them is, for example, the echinacea flower essence. I find a lot of times when we have uh, poor immunity, it's related to a poor self-esteem and poor personal boundaries. So you work on flower essences that help that. Um, echinacea, which is for the immune system physically, helps you have the feeling that you are, it pulls together your self-esteem, and your self-esteem, I find, is very strongly linked to your ability to stand up to yourself. Another possibility is um, yarrow. Um, which helps protect you against when you're overly sensitive to environmental influences or that Yarrow special formula. Another one um, that I was thinking of, which, oh, the uh, walnut, which is, again, kind of when you attract that kind of parasitic energy because you don't know how to disconnect from things that are dysfunctional. So those are some examples, but you'd have to look at the actual individual case to determine what the real remedies would be. And we are now a half hour over time, and so it's time for us to say good night. But we appreciate all of those of you who joined us for this webinar tonight, and uh, sorry we couldn't get to everybody's questions, um, but uh, hopefully we will, um, you know, uh, many of you will sort join the uh, paid webinar and we'll be able to answer more of your questions and give you more information about how to use these remedies to help yourself and other people to uh, work with the emotional wounds. Good night. Thank you. Good night.